saw you down there talking to everybody. Like, thanks so much for your time and like yeah, keeping it keeping it going. Really appreciate that. Yeah. But uh, also, I saw you playing with your wrist. So yeah. I know you got in that um, that accident recently, broke mm -hmm. your wrist, and kind of what I was seeing was you weren't really playing yet, and so you're playing again. Yeah, um, it's it's starting to come back a little bit. I mean, it's there's a lot of stuff that I have to do differently when I play. Um, so it's kind of like a little bit of learning again, but yeah, uh, but yeah, it's a bummer, man. It's just like, like that's like all the motion I have right now, especially since I played last night. So it's really sore, but yeah, the doctors were saying, you know, it's never gonna, it's never gonna feel the same, and you know, don't don't get too excited about jumping on the guitar again, but I have to. <laughs> yeah, seriously, that's what I was gonna say when like when I didn't know you were playing again, like that torment inside oh. from not being able to play. Oh, it's unbelievable. I'd be sitting, I was when I had my cast on, and I'd be walking around my house, and just like. Why am I so bo like why like why do I feel like I just have nothing to do with myself like I just don't this is such a weird feeling and then it dawned on me I'm like oh because I'd be playing guitar right now like I'd be sitting in, on my bed playing guitar or I'd be ow or I'd be uh, uh, you know so it, it's uh, yeah it's it's a real bummer when you don't have uh, the ability to play when yeah. you do what you love yeah yeah so um the new album Ready mm -hmm. Steady Go you focus on the rockabilly side got to work with Brian Setzer and. What I found really interesting about that is like most people your age or your audience's age probably never heard of Brian Setzer, right? Yeah. Or didn't know a lot about the movement. So like how much do you feel like you're like educating them and like what are the specific things you want people to know about that movement? Um Well that it's really awesome. Uh I don't know, I think uh you know the the artists that I've always looked up to I've have really helped me discover music like if, you know if I love the Beatles and I go oh who are the Beatles influenced by and who are you know who's Jimi Hendrix listening to why does he play guitar like that like who's he being inspired by so I've always like worn my inspirations on my sleeve like literally with my tattoos but um worn my inspirations on my sleeve so when uh fans come up or anything like that it's like I love introducing them to new music or or old music you know stuff they haven't heard before and stuff like that so um I like doing that with this record because th that's why I put a, like a bunch of covers on the album too, like not just originals to kind of do for my fans what the artists that I love did for me. You know, like Brian Setzer, I would have never who known who Eddie Cochran or Gene Vincent or any of those cats were if I didn't see an interview with Brian Setzer when I was eleven years old. That was like, yeah, man, Eddie Cochran's the man. I'm like, wait, who's that? I gotta go check him out, and then realize that he is the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got to love going down that rabbit hole. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and it's an, and it's endless too. So you just keep going and going and going. It's way better than waiting for like you know, a new Black Eyed Peas record to come out or something like that. <laughs> and so the records on vinyl, we were talking a lot about like you know new school coming through with the old school. So like, how do you kind of see vinyl fitting in with our current technology? Like, why is now a good time for it to come back? Well, vinyl's always been, I mean, it's always been a good time for vinyl to come back. I've, I've been collecting vinyl since I was a little kid. Um, there's just something about the way it sounds and the warmth and the, the whole, even, even the whole ritual of like holding a big album in your hand and pulling the plastic out and putting it on and hearing the scratch of the needle and then the song starting and also hearing an album the way it's supposed to be played. Like, okay, those are the first six, then you flip it over and hear this, that you like, it's, uh, it's just a whole different excuse me, um, listening experience than just, you know, shuffling on your iPod or anything like that. It's just a totally different experience, and it's, uh, I think it's, it's awesome. It's way more fun to listen to music like that, so it's, it's, it's really cool to see that there's, like, you know, like products like the uh, old, old record players, like, you can see them being sold at Urban Outfitters now, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's, like, I've been waiting for that, you know? They're, like, the number one seller of vinyl last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, it's unreal. I mean, when I was a kid, to try and find a record store and, like, a, a record player, you were, like, you were, like, trying to fix, like, try, trying to find a needle for my dad's old record player. Like, I remember as a kid, like, like, having to go to Radio Shack and, like, hoping they have, like, a vinyl needle and, like, all this stuff. And now you just go down to Urban Outfitters and, kid, you know, you walk into every, you know, room, whatever, you know, any college girl, and they just got a little Crosby record player. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we it's got awesome. we got two really big uh, record stores down here. Oh yeah, yeah, on Telegraph. Oh.